bwana kuka kuka na us to occupy the chairs in front let's move before we can take our seats just from the back to the front let there be no empty chair in front of you thank you so much praise him god bless you amelia keep on standing if you don't mind amen keep on standing if you don't mind let's keep on moving are you blessed to be in the house of the lord for one minute i want you to lift up your hands i want you to declare say in the name of jesus lift up your hands say in the name of jesus my life will never be the same again the glory of god will constantly fill me i am moving from grace to grace from glory to glory from favor to favor from blessing to blessing beginning today i am breaking boundaries in my life i am breaking boundaries in my life i am moving in levels dimensions of favor dimensions of results dimensions of fruitfulness please for one minute i want you to open your mouth and begin to declare that you're breaking boundaries this wonderful afternoon you are breaking boundaries this wonderful afternoon open your mouth and begin to make a declaration spiritual boundaries spiritual boundaries come on open your mouth prophesy over your own life open your mouth and prophesy you are breaking boundaries you are breaking boundaries things are shifting in your life social boundaries financial boundaries career boundaries 
family boundary. Somebody open your mouth and make the declaration. Open your mouth and make the declaration. You are breaking boundaries. The power of life and death is in your tongue. Open your mouth and begin to declare you are breaking boundaries. You are breaking boundaries. No boundary shall stay close around you. No door shall be closed in your life. Your destiny opens up. Your destiny opens up. Come on, I'm giving you one more minute to open your mouth. Your business boundaries, your career boundaries, your financial boundaries, your spiritual boundaries, your family boundaries. Open your mouth and make a decree. You are breaking. You are breaking. You are breaking. No more shall there be a limitation. Open your mouth and declare, enlarge my cost. Enlarge my territory. Enlarge my influence. Enlarge me, O oh God. I am breaking every boundary. I am breaking it in the name of Jesus. I am breaking it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you believe it, give the Lord a clap because he answers prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Almighty. Good afternoon to all of you. Glory to God. Let's go to First Kings chapter number 12. Uh, very quickly so that we can be able to continue the journey that we have been dealing with. Entitled, The Importance of Sound Counsel. Amen. I've dealt with this by introducing or defining what counsel is. I proceeded to be able to talk about types, four types of counsel. And I was also able to, pre I was privy to also go a bit deeper and talk about uh, what we call importance of counsel. Seven reasons why counsel is very critical. Now today, I want to move and talk about nine laws that govern counsel. Nine laws that govern counsel. Now, remember my definition of counsel. Number one, I said counsel is simply known as advice. That's definition number one. Number two, instruction for direction. Instruction for direction. Number three, it is that voice that is implanted in you that determines the direction you will take in life, the action and the reactions that you will have in life. It's a voice that is implanted in you determining the direction you will take, also the action and the reactions you will have in your life. So now I want to go again and deal with this. I will read from verses, uh, let me start from verse one. Let me just start from verse 1. And Rehoboam went to Shechem for all Israel uh, were come to Shechem to make him king. And it came to pass when Jeroboam the son of Nebat was yet in Egypt, heard of it for he was fled from the presence of King Solomon and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt. That they sent and called him and Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam saying, Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore... Make thou, uh, make thou the grievous service of thy father and his heavy yoke which he put on us lighter and we will serve thee. Now this is a young guy who was coming to leadership and people are coming to make an inquiry seeking that he will be able to handle them a bit better. Remember his father was King Solomon. Verse number 5 said, And he said unto them, Depart yet for three days and then come again unto me. And the people departed. Verse 6 says, And King Rehoboam consulted. Somebody say consulted. Shout it loud, I say again, consulted. He consulted with the old man and stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived. I mean, who stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived and said, How do ye advise that I may answer these people? And they spake unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto these people this day, and wilt serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. So they are giving him counsel that should be able to help him have an advantage as a leader. But verse 8 is very interesting. It says, but he forsook the counsel of the old men which they had given him and consulted uh, the young men and that uh, the young men that were grown up with him and which stood before him. Now you can keep on reading throughout. The result was quite simple. The guy ended up losing the kingdom. It was divided into two because of receiving counsel that didn't direct him in a right way. There are laws that govern counsel. Please remember, counsel is critical in life. Like I quoted yesterday, I said that Bishop Jonathan Alau makes a statement. He says, the greatest need of humanity is direction. And one of the challenges that we have is that many people end up receiving counsel that confuses them, conflicts them, or even brings them into trouble. 
traps. When we receive right counsel, we find right direction. So, which means that one of the things that we have to train ourselves is to get to understand. How do I decipher what is right? And how do I receive what is right? How do I cut off what is wrong? And how do I help myself in tapping into what is right? Counsel, number one. Law number one. The first way that you can be able to at least find right counsel or to be able to tap into it is to understand that counsel must be sought for. Counsel must be sought for. The same scripture that we have read in 1 Kings chapter number 12 indicates that he sought for counsel. He requested that he should be given about three days and the Bible records very clearly in verse number 6 that he ended up seeking after counsel. In James chapter number 1 and verse number 5, James 1 and verse 5 also gives us the same indication. James encourages a group of people in verse number 2. He tells them, count it all joy when you're faced with diverse temptation. But in verse 5, he tells them, and let them that lack wisdom ask. In other words, in every situation you are faced in in life, one of the culture you have to train yourself to is to learn to seek wisdom. Pursue after counsel. Write this down. The counsel you never seek will never come to you. The counsel that you never seek will never come to you. Counsel must be pursued. Most of the times, people always fail in life, not necessarily because they do not have answers around them. The answers are there. The challenge that they have is that they never make a, a, what we call an effort of pursuing after counsel. Counsel never comes to you. You go for it. I wish I had an amen right here. You go after counsel. Even when we are dealing with seeking God, the Bible records in Genesis 25 of how Rebecca sought God. Asking God the question why there was a problem in her womb. Every time people ever won any battle, one of the greatest examples we have is King David. The battles he always won, he won them because he inquired of God. Inquired. Counsel must be sought for. Somebody say, I'm a seeker. Number two, counsel must be confirmed. Law number two is that counsel must be confirmed. Now the confirmation we are talking about here is internal witness. Internal witness. Psalms chapter number 85 and verse number 8. Internal witness. Every counsel you ever receive, there must be an internal witness on the inside of you. In other words, counsel shouldn't be a surprise to you. Whenever you're given counsel within you, there is an anchor. Or rather, let me use a different terminology. There is a signal that gives you either a red light to warn you or a green light to go ahead and receive it. It is an internal witness. In Psalms chapter number 85 and verse number 8, look at what he says. I will hear what the Lord will speak for he will speak peace unto his people. If by any chance I give you a counsel and there is no peace on the inside of you, you have a right to reject it. Now, make it clear that counsel is equal to prophecy in this context. Are you understanding me? So if I give you a prophetic word and there is no peace on the inside of you, don't receive it. No matter how anointed I am, there must be a confirmation. Can I hear an amen? So law number two, counsel must be confirmed. And the anchor or the light that shows you it is correct is a peace that you have on the inside of you. He says, and God will speak. What will he speak? He will speak peace to his people. Any counsel that doesn't tally with your inner conviction must never be received. Give me an amen right here. Number three, law number three, counsel is always established in the weaknesses of two or three. Counsel is established in the weakness of two or three. Now that is to tell you that even though one has been able to give you counsel, it is never wrong to confirm it from another. Can I hear an amen? More so whenever you're making what we call destiny decisions, you're thinking of who you should marry. Making a decision concerning career or even going ahead about decisions as it relates to various major things concerning your life. Always make an effort to have two or three people to get to confirm it. It's essential. I want you to consider the scripture in Matthew 18 and verse 16. Look at Matthew 18, 16 and 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 29. Now this is Jesus speaking about a person that had an issue. And in Matthew 18, this is what he says. But if he will hear, he will not hear thee. Then take with thee one or two more. That in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word, every word, every word may be established. It is not wrong after you want to make a major decision to make an effort to consult from other people. Please give me an amen. Counsel requires a witness of two or three. 
Always learn that there are people who God will bring around you. For example, if somebody gave you a prophecy and told you that God is saying you should get married to so and so, prophecy can never, you know, one man of God made a joke and he's a friend of mine. He wrote it on Facebook and I was laughing. He said, if it was prophecy, if it was prophecy that led you into marriage, it will be revelation that will pull you out of it. I laughed. And I said, that one is very true. Let me give a different example. And I want you, not an example, a practical part of life. They say that it takes 30% uh, is what you require to confirm that the two of you ought to be together. You need 30%. That is what confirms that you ought to marry that person or you ought to be connected to a person. 70% is a management of it. Now, why he was quoting what he was quoting was simply to say, many Christians are hinge on the 30%. God said, you are my wife. God said, you are my husband. Now, the fact that God said does not mean the marriage can survive. God can confirm it is his will, but you must understand faith gives you an answer, but wisdom sustains the result. The challenge with many believers is that we only want God to speak, but we are not really ready yet to go ahead and take responsibility to sustain whatever we have. In life, you must understand, even as it relates to marriage, 30% is a confirmation that you know God spoke. God may have even used other people to confirm it. But in as much as God will speak, it will take the remaining 70% to sustain it. So one person went ahead and he said that though there are people who say God spoke, you will still find out they have a challenge. Yet you will find out that there are people who God may not have spoken. They may have even begun on a faulty foundation. But their marriage has more solid ability to sustain. The answer is very simple. They stabilize on 70 even if they were not good on 30. Did I hear an amen? Let me hear more louder. Amen. There's a reality you must learn in life. Always have witnesses. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 29. Look at 1 Corinthians 14 and verses number 29. That is why Paul says that though, you know, he says you have many instructors. You remember that scripture? Oh, come on. Are you hearing me? So having many mentors is never, never wrong. It is never wicked. You can have one or two fathers, but when it comes to mentors, you can have diverse. So look at this. It says, let the prophet speak. Two or three. And let the other judge. So third law when it comes to counsel. You must have a witness of two or three. Can I hear an amen? Law number four. Is counsel is always received from people of experience. Good counsel or sound counsel. Comes from people of experience. It comes from people of experience. Anytime you really want to make better judgment. Look for people that have gone ahead of you. It helps you. It secures you. Clear example is what we have read in the book of Kings when we are actually able to observe how this king who had come into leadership consulted the old people who stood before his father and they gave him counsel that would have established his kingdom but they ignored. He ignored and went to others. I want to make it very clear here that if you will ever make it in life, look for people who have gone ahead of you. People who have some level of experience in life. You know, let me say this. You cannot self-counsel yourself. Only a fool does what we call self-diagnosis and counsel. Or rather you go ahead, self, not diagnosis, that one is wrong. You go ahead and you do what we call self-prescription. You sit down, you make an assessment, and you decide that this is what I will do for myself. They are decisions, my friend, you have to look for people who are way ahead of you. You want to marry, look for people who are in marriage. I sit down people, every time they're about to do a wedding, or maybe they're thinking of progressing into marriage, there are questions I go ahead and I ask them. One of them is very simple. I would ask them, do you have any potential couple around you that you will see that they might become your best couple? Some give me an answer, they say we do. Others do not even have one. So what exactly happens, more so in Nairobi, is that people get married with the best couple they have collected a month towards the wedding. If not so, it is even worse nowadays. They go ahead and collect a best friend. So if it's me, I collect a best friend. If it's my wife, she collects her own best friend. The best friends have nothing to do with marriage. Now listen very carefully. We usually say this. My uncle taught me this and it is something that is very practical. He said this. He told me Pancras. There are only two people that have a right to enter into your bedroom if you have a problem. I said, please tell me. He said, your pastor and his wife or your best couple who act as your spiritual parents on the day you get married. When they are signing the certificate, they are actually giving birth to you. So if you get a best couple which has no experience, you are automatically crippled. There are many couples today who have no voices speaking to them. They speak to themselves. Oh, am I in charge? Ask your neighbor, are you one of them? Tell your neighbor, I told you, ask your neighbor. Ask your neighbor, neighbor, are you one of them? <laughs> Tell them, neighbor, experience is an advantage. 
Look at the other one. That one doesn't believe you. Turn to the other one again. Tell them again, neighbor, experience is always an advantage. Proverbs chapter number 4. Go with me there. Proverbs 4 from verse number 1. Always have people that are way ahead of you. Don't self-cancel yourself. Have somebody who can tell you the truth. Somebody who can rebuke you. Somebody who can inspire you. Always have a person that can sit you down and tell you this is a road to take. In Proverbs 4 in verse 1, he says, Hear ye children, the instruction of a father. Now, who is speaking? I mean Solomon. But I want us to go through it. Hear ye the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. Verse number 2. Let's keep on reading it. I want you to pick these things. For I give you good doctrine equal to the word counsel. Forsake ye not my law. Verse number 3. Let's keep on reading it. For I was my father's son. Tender and, on, and, and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Now, who is speaking Solomon? He says, even me. I was a son to somebody. So let's read the next verse. Are you guys here? Look at the next verse. What did he do? He taught me what? Talk to me. He did what? So let me ask you the question. Do you think the wisdom of Solomon only came from God? No. The Proverbs that Solomon writes, if you keep on reading them, he records about the father's teaching. He too had a father. He said, he taught me also and said unto me, let thy heart retain my words and keep my commandments and live. Solomon had a teacher. He wasn't just wise because God gifted him with wisdom. Every man that ever progresses in life must have a teacher ahead of him. Oh, let me hear better. Amen. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse number 20. Isaiah 30 and verse number 20. Always have somebody who will be experienced that can speak to you. Isaiah 30. Look at what he says from verse 20 to verse 21. And the Lord, and though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not your teachers be removed into a corner, but thine eyes shall see your teachers. So God has teachers. In every battle you are facing, every decision you're almost making, they are teachers somewhere. God says your eye will see them. My question is, who are your teachers? <laughs> the next verse, verse 21. If you hear me say, I hear you. <laughs> Thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is a way. Walk in it. So, the way I come out of affliction, the way I come out of adversity, is a voice that speaks to me. I pray for you that God will surround you with counsel. I said again, I pray for you that God will surround you with counsel. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor they are around you even right now. There's somebody who, are, who is ahead of you in ministry. There's somebody who is ahead of you in marriage. There's somebody ahead of you in business. There's somebody ahead of you. Listen to me. Every time you have a voice speaking to you, you always run away from chaos. Write this down. You either learn through mentors or mistakes in life. You have only two teachers. You're right. You either learn through mentors or mistakes in life. The difference is very clear. Mentors secure you from pain, but mistakes introduce you to pain. It's a very clear thing, Pastor Jack. Anytime you have mentors, you are secured. You will never go through pain. So what others take 10 years to become, what they have gone through in 10 years, they can give it to you to succeed in one year. Now give me a better amen. When Paul says, do not receive the grace of God in vain, he's not talking of the grace of salvation. We limit the word grace. He's talking about something he has worked through himself over a period of years which he wants to share with other people. He says, what I have grown through, if I give it to you, it will secure you. There are guys who have gone through that path for 10 years. They can give it to you and in one year, you can achieve what they took them 10 years to. We went to see Bishop Gishana uh, with Apostle David Juma. And when we, walked, when we walked in like this, that guy began to tell me, I've been waiting for you. He even rebuked me. He told me, why are you waiting for Apostle Juma to come and see me? I said, no, sir. And then he went ahead and gave me other things which I'll not be able to tell you. But while we walked into that apostolic, it's an apostolic office. The moment you walk in, you will see all manner of pictures. All manner of pictures. Then Apostle Juma began to tell him, sir, I know you may not remember me. But in 1987, while I was a CU chairman in a particular place, we were actually going somewhere and we walked into your pujot five or four and then as we came into your pujo you commanded everyone in the car everyone now begin to speak in tongues he said that was one of the things that changed my life and i've come just to honor you are you hearing me later on he took us to the upper room which is a prayer room and so when he took us there he requested apostle juma and his wife to pray so we began to pray, all of us. Instead, they knelt down. 
And they said, sir, we have seen what God has done through you, the crusades. This is a man that would go to Tanzania and hold a crusade of over 100,000. Cripples would walk. Things would happen. Apostle Juma now said to him, sir, while you have given us a privilege to pray, we are about to start tent crusades. And we want that grace that worked for you years to now work for us. So while you have given us the privilege to pray for this, <laughs> we see something bigger. Oh, please give me a louder amen. There's somebody who has been where you have never been to before. Connect with them. They will give you counsel and you will be secured in your destiny. Again, I pray for you that God will send them to you. I said again, may God send them to you in the name of Jesus. Number five. Is it number five? Counsel law number five. Counsel works not only when it is hard, but when it is applied. Counsel works not only when it is hard, but when it is applied. Many Christians have no problem. They listen to a pastor, but they never act on what they are taught. By experience, and I can tell you this for free. Listen to me. Every time I've sat down with people in my office, somebody comes, I give them an instruction. I tell them what to do. They don't listen. Not long after that, they come back with a problem in more exceeding ways. I look at them, I tell them, didn't I tell you what to do? You never applied, so the pain has to increase. Counsel must not just be hard. If it will work, it must be applied. It must be applied. Never waste the time of people that God has anointed for your sake. Don't go sitting down with them to listen to them over something you know you will never do. You would rather avoid. You would rather avoid. Kenneth Hagen had taken a young man out for lunch. And when he took the young man out for lunch, the young man was so excited because this was the only dream he had. He wanted to meet this legend, Kenneth Hagen Sr. Wanted to sit down with him and tap to his level best. As he sat down with him in the hotel, Kenneth Hagen asked him, whatever you want, go ahead and ask. He asked whatever he wanted. They sat down. For over two hours, the young boy was quiet. Kenneth Hagen was also quiet. He looked at him. He told him, young man, is there anything? The young boy was also very quiet. Two hours was done. He told him, I have to return back to the office. There are other activities I have to do. The young boy now began to regret. And that is when Kenneth Hagen later on said, when you sit in the presence of greatness or in the presence of those that God has appointed for you, learn to engage them if you will draw out grace from them are you hearing me go to proverbs chapter 20 let me show you this scripture and i trust you are getting something it must be applied some of you know where you are you never applied you knew it very well what you ought to do verses uh, that is proverbs chapter 20 and verse 5 Proverbs 20 and verse 5. Don't only listen. That's why even when the word is coming to you, it's not enough to hear lest you deceive yourself. The fact that you are blessed with the teaching, blessed with the preaching, doesn't mean it is working. It is application that you require. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water. Are you guys here? But the Bible says a man of understanding will draw it and pull it out. He knows how to pull out that thing. Are you guys hearing me? You must learn. Counsel calls for a working force. And may you receive that grace in Jesus' precious name. I said again, may you receive that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Number six, counsel is progressive. Counsel is progressive. The sixth law, I'm pushing something because I'm taking you somewhere. There are nine laws. Number six, counsel is progressive. It is progressive. Every time you must understand the first counsel you receive leads to the second one. The second counsel you receive and obey leads to the third one. When we grew up in ministry, there was a time there was a prophecy given. And the word of prophecy was God said, obedience to number one will lead to number two. There are people who forget that counsel is progressive. In other words, what you listen to now, there is another level you are to enter. The counsel you do not receive and obey now closes a door to the next dimension. Even God will never show you his mysteries without you crying for more. Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse number 3. Let's go there. Jeremiah 33 and verse number 3. Counsel is progressive. God wants to keep on teaching you. God wants to keep on revealing these things to you. God wants to keep on guiding you to deeper things. God wants to show you mysteries that only a few people can be able to have. He says, call unto me. God is speaking and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. God wants to keep on revealing brighter light to take you deeper in levels you have never been. Counsel is progressive. What you heard yesterday is not what you will hear today. What you will hear today is not what you will hear tomorrow. Every day there is fresh manner. 
Every day there is fresh manna. You remember the children of Israel? They were told very clearly that when you will begin to receive the manna, when you will take it, eat it for the day. Let it not stay over the night lest it will get spoiled. And the Bible records the reason was because manna was meant for a day. There is always a fresh word for every day. May you receive it. Oh, your amen needs to be louder. I said again, may you receive it. I shouted again, may you receive it. John chapter 8 and verse 31. Counsel is progressive. It is progressive. There are deeper things that God wants to show you. Even a man of God can never go deeper with people who on the very onset are not receiving when Jesus would want to do miracles, he never did it by laying on of hands. The Bible says he laid hands on a few for he saw no faith in them. Which means a high majority of the miracles of Jesus, he did them as he kept on speaking. The blind would see while he was preaching. The lame would begin to walk while he was preaching. But when he entered a place where they had no receptivity, he automatically had to lay hands on them. That is not God. Do you know, even right now as I'm speaking, some of you can get a breakthrough. Yes, some of you even right now as I'm speaking, God can be sorting you out as I am talking. Look at John 8 and verse 31. Now Jesus is speaking to believers who are Jews. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. That if you continue, somebody say continue. Shout it like you came to church. Shout again, continue. He says, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. He says there is something. There is progression. Don't just be the receivers. You only receive one and you stop there. He says continue. Continue. Why? Verse number 32 is the one now that we constantly read. He says you will be my disciples indeed. Then he says and you shall know the truth. So you began by hearing the word. But as you continue truth became revealed. God has something bigger way behind the door. God has something larger way behind the door. Keep on pursuing the progressions of counsel. Don't stop where you are. Keep on asking him for more and he will keep on revealing more. Keep on asking him to teach you and God will teach you. He has never been discouraged to reveal mysteries to those that are hungry to hear. God is a fine teacher. Please shout a better amen. God is a fine teacher. Listen to me. There is wisdom you have never heard that you can hear today. There is counsel you have never heard. Even your generation has never heard. You can tap to today. Counsel is progressive. As I'm speaking like this, I feel light breaking forth in somebody's life. Counsel is progressive. There are things God can show you 10 years from now. God can teach you today. 20 years from now, God can teach you today. Let no one ever lie to you that you have to keep on living as the day comes. No. God is very clear. He says that what the eye has not seen, the ear has not heard, the heart has not conceived. Those things he will reveal to them that love him. God will always give you counsel. He can show you what will happen by the end of the year. God can show you where you will be in two years from today. I want you to put your hand on your head. Say, I receive today deeper levels in God. I want you to shout it louder. Say, oh God, open counsel into my life today. I pray for every one of you today that you will have a hunger to go deeper. I said you will have a hunger to go deeper. God will keep on teaching you. I repeat again, God will keep on teaching you through the scriptures, through mentors, by divine revelation. I pray for you, you will never get stuck. God will give you progressive counsel. Progressive counsel. Progressive counsel. Progressive counsel. I said receive it in the name of Jesus. Look at verses number 3 of Job 29. Then I will finish with the last law. There are other laws. I will deal with them tomorrow. Job 29 and verse number 3. Counsel is progressive. I refuse to be stuck this year. Because his counsel shall be upon me. Job 29 and verses number 3. Look at the words of Job. Job is making a very solid statement. He said, when his candle shined on my head. So the candle of God can shine upon your head. And when by his light, by his light, I walked through darkness. Darkness is considered an uncertainty. You are uncertain about the future. Uncertain about the days ahead of you. But there is a candle God will put on your head. There is a candle God will place on your head. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? And he says, by that light, you will walk through the darkness, the uncertainty of life. When others don't know what to do, you will never be stuck. Oh, you need to shout a louder. Amen. I said, you will never be stuck. 
Number seven, let me stop here. Law number seven, counsel must be received with humility. With a humble and a meek spirit, you must be teachable. You receive it with humility. Proud people never learn anything. Only humble people receive. John chapter number one, James rather, James one and verse number 22 and verse 23. So you must have a teachable spirit. Teachable spirit. In your heart every day when you wake up, God says, I want to give you the covenants that many have not seen. Now in James 1 and verse 22, when the writer is actually speaking, he says, be ye doers of the word and not hearers, saying, deceiving your own self. My emphasis is the verse that will follow. For if any be a hearer, look at what he says, and I mean a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his face in an unnatural glass, in a natural face in a glass. The next verse after that, Look at what he says. For he beholdeth himself and goeth away and forgetteth straightway what manner of man he was. I'm looking for a word here. Let's continue, Pastor Gideon. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth, and being not a forgetful hearer, look at what he says, but is a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed. Now, what I wanted to pick about here, there's a statement, I don't know which translation this is. He says, who receives the word of God with meekness. Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? That there's a quality of a heart that people always have that is teachable enough to allow heaven to smile over them with counsel they have never received. There must be teachable people. I was preaching somewhere, and I remember that time back in the year uh, 2008 when I landed there in South Africa. As I stood up in less than five minutes, while I'm just preaching, five minutes, people were down under the anointing of God. No laying on of hands, I'm just introducing my sermon. I went to the next service when we were finishing, we had the next day, less than five to ten minutes, people were down under the power. And people were wondering, one person came and he said, Pastor, hey, you must be very powerful. For people to be affected in five to ten minutes of your sermon people are not on their i mean are not sitting down they are up on their feet they are falling under the power i said no i said it's because you came ready to receive let me say this to each one of you even if a person never prayed but a congregation comes ready to receive miracles are natural you don't need to fuss about it there is a guarantee ready recipients will draw well will draw miracles like they have never had anytime you want to tap into counsel be meek pride and limits release but humility commands release may god give you a heart that can tap into counsel may god show you things that few people can be able to see may god unlock mysteries to you that your generation has never been able to have may god give you a teachable spirit that in your day and time god will show you the future before the future can be able to appear may god give you wisdom that will give you the act to navigate through the pathway of life in your generation may god lead you into places of uncommon victory may god open your eyes in the place of darkness to begin to see the portals that others may trap they get trapped in and lead you away from it may god give you victories that few people can be able to receive by the counsel of god may god lift your head that your generation will recognize you and wonder what manner of man you are but the counsel you will give to you may god teach you financial success teach you marital success teach you the victory in the spirit teach you warfare in the spirit may god lead you in paths you have never been to before i prophesy to you in 2020 your level is going higher by the spirit of counsel your level is going higher by the spirit of counsel your level is going higher I know you may have wept last year I know you may have cried last year but I declare today by the spirit of counsel the Lord will take you higher you higher the lord will enlarge you the lord will quicken you the lord will deliver you from war the lord will save you from chaos i declare in 2022 the candle of god will not fail on your head i said the candle of god will not fail on your head wisdom to lead you wisdom to guide you counsel to elevate you counsel to promote you may this oil rest on your head today be up on your feet and begin to say, Lord, let your counsel rest on my head. Open your mouth and just begin to raise a prayer. I'm willing to receive. I'm teachable enough to receive. Teach me. My heart is open. Show me my eyes are ready to see. Lord, I am open. Somebody open your mouth. Open your mouth and begin to cry out for this. This spirit of counsel today. 
Come on, open your mouth and begin to cry out. There is a way of escape. There is a way of escape. Listen to me. If you ask him, he will give you. If you ask him, he will give you. God can show you another way. God can lead you in another way. He is not limited. He still speaks. He still speaks. So open your mouth and begin to pray. Oh God, let your counsel be on my head, in my career, in my business, in my marriage, as I raise my children. Lord, I am asking for your counsel. Let it be on me as a single parent, as a single person, as a married person. Let your counsel be on me. Even in ministry, I receive your counsel. Come and open your mouth. I'm giving you 60 more seconds. 60 more seconds as we are upstanding. Open your mouth and begin to ask him, Lord, give me your counsel. 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 Come on, come on, come on. 30 more seconds. There's somebody here. God wants to show you some things. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, give me your counsel. Give it to me. Give it to me. Let light break out. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Put your right hand on your head. Lift up your left hand. Put your right hand on your head. Lift up your left hand. Could I pray for you? In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you're facing. But by this prayer, I ask the Lord to open your eyes. By this prayer, I declare God will guide you. By this prayer, I declare you are coming out of that quagmire. By this prayer, I pray that the voice of God will become clearer to you. I pray for somebody. I hope you are hearing me now. In the name of Jesus, may God come in a dream. May God come in a vision. May God come through a small still voice. May God come through the scriptures. May God come through prophecy. Whatever you need to hear, I pray, may you receive. I said, may you receive. Oh, I didn't hear you. May you receive. I never heard you. May you receive. I didn't hear you. May you receive. As you lift your hands, Lord, we say thank you. We say thank you. Come on, just lift your hand. We say thank you. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, our Father. There are two people in this congregation. You have been walking through dark times. Dark times. The Holy Spirit says, now my light is coming. The sign is you will begin to feel light. You've been having heaviness. You will begin to feel light. You will just feel like the atmosphere is opening. Right now, whoever you are, receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. I see another category of people here. Dreams have been confusing you. In fact, of late, God used to speak to you a lot in dreams, but your dreams have become more negative and negative. Right now, God is correcting your dreams. In the name of Jesus, I command your dreams to change. I declare your dreams are altering right now. Whoever you are, every attack that has been coming through dreams, I command them to scatter. And I pray the Lord to restore your dreams again. Let the dreams be clearer again. Every confusion in your dream through witchcraft, I rebuke it. In fact, the Lord is telling me there are people here, it has been territorial. Where you are staying, there has been a dark cloud. I come against it. I break that spell of confusion. Come on, open your mouth. There's something God is doing. I break that spell of confusion. I break it in the name of Jesus. I said I scatter it in the name of Jesus. And right now I command your dreams to begin to alter. Your dreams to begin to alter. Your dreams to begin to alter. I see another category. God is renewing your prayer life. When you lost your prayer life, the sensation of the presence of God was weakening. I command a revival on somebody's prayer life right now. Could we just open up my pray in the Holy Ghost for a while? There is something God is doing. Pray for a while. I command a revival on somebody's renewal in their prayer life. Open your mouth and just pray. Open your mouth. If you love God and you know you have struggled in that area, may God release a revival. May God release a revival. May God release a revival right here. May God release a revival. Thank you Holy Ghost. Thank you Holy Ghost. There's something fresh coming on somebody right now. Blankets of heaviness are being removed in the name of Jesus. An anointing of prayer. An anointing of prayer. Receive it whoever you are. If you came ready to receive, there is an impartation. Receive it. Receive it now. Great
place to pray place to pray come on open your mouth for one more minute i feel transferences here mante toshila maka lepro shikandalaba yes thank you holy ghost some people here you had a prophetic mantle you lost it god is restoring prophecy god is restoring the gift of prophecy god used to show you things before they happen you used to see them but you lost it may you receive restoration 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 of the gifts of the holy ghost of the gifts of the holy ghost of the gifts of the holy ghost receive restoration mangara bosha le pro seconda la yes my god i feel him here receive in the name of jesus receive in the name of jesus receive in the name of jesus makashatila makatolima le pro sente le be that you used to see it when you are young you were clear when you are young something happened i command recovery 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 i command recover thank you holy ghost come on lift up your hands and just thank him for a while that there's something god is doing here if you're sensitive you will tap into it come on just thank him there's something i feel here open your mouth let me get at least five radical people five hungry people five people that know how to pursue him it's five people who are sensitive can you just open your mouth and begin to thank him Whoa, go ahead and begin to whisper in the holy ghost even those that are watching us there's something i feel god doing here there's something i feel god doing here i'm telling you there's something some of you can tell something on the inside on bila banda la bo come on let's use one more minute we are about to close there's something god is doing here likandila radila delika randila mosha ritanda la karia lekanda la baria ritanda la baria retende la karia ratinda la boria lekanda la bosha come on ya dila bosha nida maka likaria Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hey. Hey. Receive your breakthrough here. Receive it now. Receive your breakthrough here. I'm telling you, receive it now. Receive your breakthrough here. You don't need any other thing. Receive it now. Receive your breakthrough at work. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive your breakthrough right now. Internally, God is giving you victory. Receive your restoration. Recover the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Recover, recover, recover. Receive now. Receive now. Receive your breakthrough. 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 I'm telling you we are not emotional here something is seated right here lekaria mapro shadema yes 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 hallelujah mm 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 put your hands above your head let's rejoice and give god a clap of praise in this house Come on if you believe you have gotten a miracle over your life give God a shout and a praise right here Hallelujah Well my time quickly get your offering just get your offering very quickly because of time Tomorrow we will be dealing with what we call the spirit of counsel and I would really encourage that you don't miss quickly get your offering get your offering if you're having it in cash I want you to lift it up if you will give it in terms of e money they will post the uh, till number it's already on the screen and i want us to go ahead and give it if you have it ready would you lift it up let's lift it up lift it up even if you don't have your offering raise up your hands let me speak a blessing to you the lord bless you and bless the seed you are sowing you will increase on every level in jesus precious name Amen and amen. There's a basket on the right, one on the left. Come and drop your offering. Those that are watching us, the details are streaming on the screen. You can also participate. Please feel free. Drop it here. Tomorrow, come ready. We are going to go to another level. We'll be dealing with the spirit of counsel, and we'll open up for time for.